Hello everyone, and welcome to the premiere season of Titan Sports. I'm Oscar Rodriguez. Hey everyone, I'm Ethan Michael. What's up everyone, it's good to be back. I'm Marissa Flores. Good to see you again, I'm Alex Granados. And I'm Enrique Medina. We're here to get the ball rolling to provide you with your weekly sports updates. Welcome back to Titan Sports. The Kansas City Chiefs are once again the champions, beating the Eagles 38-35 in the Super Bowl 57 thriller. It is their second title in the past four years and officially puts them on Dynasty Watch. Patrick Mahomes earned Super Bowl MVP, throwing three touchdowns with a 138.8 passer rating. Once again, the Chiefs came back from a 10-point de deficit in the second half just like three years ago against the 49ers. Before Sunday, teams that trailed by 10 or more points at halftime were 1-26 in the Super Bowl with the only win being the Patriots against the Falcons. The Chiefs had eight minutes time of possession in the first half, and the game seemed out of reach when Mahomes re-aggravated his ankle injury at the end of the first half. But the Chiefs came out firing on all cylinders in the second half, scoring on every single possession. Jalen Hurts, let's make sure to talk about him though, played an MVP caliber game with one pivotal fumble in the first half that did result in seven points for the Chiefs. But the Eagles defense as we mentioned, could not stop a perfect second half from Patrick Mahomes and company. Mahomes becomes the second player to win MVP and Super Bowl MVP in the same season since 1999, where Kurt Warner did that with the St. Louis Rams. Although head coach Andy Reid confirmed he was coming back next season, the team could lose offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy. The Chiefs open up as favorites to repeat next season with the NFL with the NFL season done, everyone will turn their attention to the Combine in two weeks. On to football, future Hall of Famer quarterback Tom Brady has announced his retirement for the second time. The seven-time Super Bowl winner first retired in February 2022, which only lasted about a month, until he decided to play again this season. The decision loomed around the legend's final season both on and off the field. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers finished the season 8-9, the first losing season ever played for Brady. Before the 2022 season started, the three-time MVP finalized a 10-year deal with Fox worth $375 million. Brady and his longtime wife, supermodel Giselle Bunchen, also finalized their divorce halfway through the season. Though Brady still managed to lead his team in the tournament, the result was very decisive in favor of the opponent of the Dallas Cowboys in the wildcard game. With constant speculation on what he'll do next season, the 45-year-old cut right to the chase on his Instagram, stating, quote, I'm retiring for good now. I know the process was a pretty big deal last time, so when I woke up this morning, I figured I'd just let, press record and let you guys know." End quote. A career like Tom Brady's can only be accomplished with a lot of help along the way. Brady made sure to show an immense amount of appreciation for his family, teammates, friends, and last but certainly not least, his fans. He claims, quote, thank you guys for allowing me to live my absolute dream. I wouldn't change a thing. I love you all. End quote. In his 23rd season, Brady finished in the top three in passing yards, eighth in touchdowns, and led the league in completions. A big theme for this season was for Brady taking full control over his career. But at what cost? Was it worth everything that happened after returning to play? Only he can answer that. Nothing would change the fact that he ranks first in all-time wins, Super Bowl wins, Super Bowl MVPs, playoff games, playoff wins, then touchdowns, passing yards, and of course, completions. This year's NBA trade deadline was perhaps the most eventful one in league history. After the Brooklyn Nets finally hit the detonation button on the shaky, injury-filled, and sometimes magical KD and Kyrie era, sending Irving to the Mavericks and Durant to the Suns made both teams instant title contenders. The duo only played a total of 74 games together in the span of four seasons, but still managed to make their stay eventful with controversy. Kyrie Irving is one of the most talented scorers the NBA has ever seen. His actions off and off the court have managed to distract people when it comes to sitting out the majority of last season due to vaccine mandates, getting suspended by his own team, or standoff contract negotiations. The next organization certainly held their end when it came to the team's turmoil, causing the three superstars they had one time, being the big three, Durant, Irving, and then James Harden. Both each asked for a trade at different times. After a signing of long-term extension with the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Nets a year prior, Durant asked to be traded right before the season started. 
Shortly after a slow start, head coach Steve Nash was then fired. The team still, still somehow managed to be the second in the Eastern Conference. That is, until then, Durant sprained his MCL in January. This has been the constant story for the Nets since the three superstars joined the team in 2019 and will ultimately go down as the biggest reason the Nets were not, never able to win the championship. Another big player in this year's trade deadline was the Los Angeles Lakers. Since his rocky return to his hometown, Russell Westbrook has been a constant name in trade rumors, with the 2017 MVP being the second highest paid player in the league with a contract worth over $47 million a year Finding a team to accept and offer a deal was hard to come by. In the midst of his all-star teammates LeBron James and Anthony Davis being sidelined with injuries, Westbrook was able to find his rhythm once again with more touches. Los Angeles managed to land D'Angelo Russell in a three-team trade, sending Westbrook to the Utah Jazz and Mike Connolly to the Minnesota Timberwolves. While the Lakers and Wolves intend to use their new inquiries to help, to help contend in the playoffs, it is expected that Westbrook and the Jazz will agree to a buyout for the remainder of his contract. Before he joined the Lakers and took on a new role in 2021, Russ Westbrook averaged a triple-double scoring over 22 points and earning career highs in assists and rebounds at over 11 a game. After, per, after being perhaps the most criticized player in the league for the past couple of seasons, picking the right situation for the future Hall of Famer to help rewrite his script is crucial for the remainder of his career. Sticking with the NBA in the Lakers versus Oklahoma City Thunder game last week, LeBron James has broken the scoring record set by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. After burying a historic 14-foot fadeaway jumper, placing him at the top and pinnacle of the NBA's all-time scoring list. Abdul-Jabbar had been atop the career points list since April 5, 1984, when he broke the mark held previously by Wilt Chamberlain, a record now in the hands of LeBron James. James entered the game with 38,352 points, needing 36 to overtake Abdul-Jabbar. He finished the night with 38 points under his sleeve on 13 of 20 shooting, along with 7 rebounds, 3 assists, and 3 steals. James teared up as he recalled the night he told ESPN, quote, I actually felt like I was sitting on top of the arena when that shot went in, and the roar from the crowd, I'm not sure if I would be able to feel that feeling again, end quote. Photographers quickly swarmed LeBron as chants from the crowd filled his ears with the, crowd, with the word MVP as highlights of his last 20 years in the game were shown on the video board. The game came to a halt for about 10 minutes while James hugged his family, including his wife and three children who watched the game from a baseline seat near the Lakers bench. Many have pegged Michael Jordan as the greatest of all time, however, looking at LeBron's stats, having accomplished four championships at the top and adding the career scoring record to his resume, creates another conversation with that GOAT debate and who truly is the greatest basketball player of all time. Well, after six years, the U.S. will defend its World Baseball Classic title with a talented roster featuring four MVP winners. Headlining the squad includes three first-timers, three-time AL MVP Mike Trout, and Clayton Kershaw, a three-time Cy Young Award winner. The U.S. roster includes winners of six MVPs, including defending NL MVP Paul Goldschmidt, who is a member of the 2017 squad. Other stars include 2018 or 2019, excuse me, home run champion Pete Alonso, 10-time Gold Glove third baseman Nolan Arenado, two-time World Series champion Mookie Betts, and defending National League batting champion Jeff McNeil. The pitching staff does consist entirely of first-timers in the World Baseball Classic, which I will remind will take place in Taiwan, Japan, Phoenix, and Miami, which is going to be hosting the semifinals and the finals. While Bryce Harper is recovering from Tommy John surgery, the two-time MVP committed to play during the MLB regular season, but unfortunately won't be playing due to that injury. While Bryce Harper is recovering from Tommy John surgery, the two-time NL MVP committed to play during the MLB regular season, but unfortunately won't be playing due to that injury. All right, everyone, stick around because after the break, we're going to have your weekly fix of CSUF Sports coming right at you, so stay tuned.
Welcome back, everyone. This is Titan Timeline. We're here to keep you updated with all sports actions at home. The Big West champs were back in action this past weekend. CSU softball began the year with the first tournament of the season, the East End Classic, and finished it with a record of 3-2. After dropping the opener to number 2 UCLA, the Titans weekend was highlighted with a 2-0 win against Utah State. Pitcher Micah Sutherland had a no-hitter going on to the sixth inning and tossed a complete game shutout along with a career of high, of high 14th strikeouts. Infielder Hannah Becerra scored both runs, breaking the deadlock with a fourth inning homer. homer. The Titans won their last two games of the tournament, including a walk-off win against San Diego and will pack their bags as they will travel to Mexico for Puerto Valatora College Challenge. The Titans will look to continue their success this season, having won five of the last six conference championships. The key will be the team's continuity as they return the entire starting lineup and rotation, including Big West Player of the Year, Megan Delgadillo. Cal State Fullerton's men's basketball held off a second half Hawaii rally to defeat the Rainbow Warriors 51-52 Saturday night on the road. The win improves the team's record to 14-12 overall and 8-6 in Big West play. Fullerton led by as many as 18 points early in the second half before Hawaii rose back. The Rainbow Warriors then used a 7-0 run over the final 2 minutes and 58 seconds, cutting the Titans' lead to 1, but Fullerton defense held strong on the final possession of the game, sealing their win 52-51. Max Jones led the Titans with 13 points to go with 2 rebounds, while Latrell Whiteshell Jr. followed with 11 points, 7 rebounds, and 4 steals. His teammates Tori San Antonio collected 9 points and 9 rebounds, while Jalen Harris added 9 points and a pair of boards. A 7-0 run cut Hawaii's deficit to 1 with 52-55. With 21 seconds left, but Fullerton held on, forcing three consecutive missed shots from Hawaii on the final possession to secure the win of 52-51. All right, everyone, stay tuned for our roundtable discussion coming right at you after this break. You'll be the first, Mija. Dad, I got in. You should know this one. Who knows it? How's it going in school? Management function, beneficial relationships with all... Hey, do you know what this word means? Empowerment? Authority or power given to someone to do something. Empowerment. Welcome back, everyone, to our roundtable discussion. Um, we have a lot of action that went over the weekend, especially, obviously, the Super Bowl. I know you guys want to talk about it a lot, but before you guys go into it, I just want to mention how Philadelphia has pretty uh, a bad luck as a city right now. You know, they just lost right now, I guess, of course, the Super Bowl. But if you talk about other sports, you got baseball, right? The Phillies also lost in the World Series oh, yeah. against the Astros. And then on soccer, too, the Philadelphia Union lost to LAFC in the final. So... I feel a little sorry for the city and um, as a whole, you know, seeing their team, I mean, seeing their team, like, lose three world championships in the same season. So it kind of sucks for them, but I want to see you guys think about the game and what you guys think about the players, Jalen Hurts, or what do you guys think about it? The Eagles actually were favored, and I know they haven't been having the best of luck, but going into the game, I don't know about you guys, but I actually had the Chiefs winning. Mm -hmm. That reason being, I know Mahomes was kind of shaky. He was still coming off of that ankle injury. He had just practiced, but... They're veterans to me. He's been in situations like that before, maybe even worse, arguably. But they've been here before. They've been in this situation. They've been on the big stage, and they knew what to do. When the time counted, they stepped up to the plate. Jalen Hurts has had an amazing season. Don't get me wrong. They put in the work, but like you said, they just haven't had the best of luck. Yeah. And some of those calls, I don't know. What do you guys feel about some of those holding mm. calls? Well, let me go back to uh, the Eagles, first of all. They have the second most sacks in the in NFL history, not this season, just NFL history. But who did they play this year? They played no elite quarterbacks. Did they play an elite coach, an elite team? They were kind of exposed this weekend. Andy Reid, oh my goodness, the <laughs> second half. Talk about adjustments. But in terms of that holding call, I know we're going to talk about the one at the end. It's a hold. Bradbury admitted it. Uh, you know, you cannot blame the game on that when you gave up a a touchdown and then the field goal at the end you you let them score in every possession so you can't let it come down to just a holding call so exactly and I think that's really when it comes down to uh, I really think defense they say it all the time defense wins championships and 
it did here. They couldn't stop him at all in the second half. So, I mean, it kind of turned back to bite him. So I'm not surprised ultimately with the result. We could argue all we want about the holding call, but the big thing is that your defense couldn't stop any position, any possession at all in the second half. It's true. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, you're talking about you feel bad for the fans. I yeah. feel bad for both fans because there's always going to be an asterisk to any championship. Any championship is always going to be a reason why a team lost and a team won. Um, but I feel like both teams uh, neck and neck, right? They had the same record. They, it was like tit for tat the whole game. Both had Kelsey brothers. so Yeah, exactly. Um, great podcast, by the way. But, um, yeah, so the, the fans don't really get to enjoy it as uh, on either side because the Eagles, they see the call. And then the Chiefs, they hear – the Chiefs should be celebrating, well-deserved. Um, both teams deserve the win, but um, obviously that can't happen. But I feel like the Chiefs fans, they, now they have to hear that it, you know, it was because of the call. And a, a great game like that that was all coming down to the wire, it was like tied, minute and 30 left. Um, it was, like, was going to be fourth and eighth when that play happened. So it's, it's, it's always a little uh, dissatisfying when, you, when the refs um, take, take, take control of the season and take control of a good game. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was actually going to mention, you mentioned the Kelseys. Uh -huh. Did you guys see their mom's game day fit? Because uh, that was uh, on awesome. point. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. From everything from the jacket to the sneakers mm -hmm. and then seeing her, of course, with both of her sons after the game, giving them both hugs, seeing her with them. It just it really brought things full circle. And now Patrick Mahomes is going to be going to Disneyland. I don't know if you guys heard that. So yeah. maybe we'll see him around the, our parts of town yesterday, now. actually. Yeah, he was there. Right? Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. There. No, no days off for him, huh? <laughs> no, but um, I wanted to go back to we were saying how the Chiefs kind of were not the favorites, too. Like, not even during that matchup, but, like, before the season started, too. Yeah. Because I want to go back because I think you have the Bills winning, right? Last so did you, though. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you said, hey, no, no. I hey, know, hey, I know, hey I know last season, you said my Bills. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's all about it's all about matchups. It's all about momentum too, right? You were yeah. talking about how the defense can stop. I think the Eagles were sort of at the end, towards the end, they were playing not to lose instead of trying to win. Yeah. And exactly. I think with the Chiefs, uh, with Mahomes, you know, they they just they play their own game. And I think a lot of times uh, other teams they are victims to playing their game, and so they're always going to lose with that. Let's talk about Patrick. Patrick Mahomes. I mean what is it, five years? He's won two NFL MVPs, two Super Bowls. He did lose that one Super Bowl to Brady, but as far as career accomplishments wise, do we think this is the greatest ever start for any NFL quarterback ever? Easily. It's not only the greatest ever, greatest start to begin a career, um, I'm automatically putting him up there after the Super Bowl win with uh, Tom Brady and Joe Montana. I think by the time it's all said and done, he's gonna be the greatest we've ever seen. As of now, no disrespect to Tom Brady, but what can Brady, what can Brady do that Mahomes can't, or vice versa. Mahomes, every, he's just the most talented player we've ever seen at that position. So and Mahomes has still, he still has a yeah, lot of so years left ahead of him. He's so a pretty big contract too. Yeah, so. for the Philly so fans who are tired of seeing him, I know some Bronco fans are tired of seeing him, but <laughs> he's going to be around for at least a few more years for sure and probably be one of the greatest in history. And you talk about Mahomes and Brady. Well, I mean, I think people don't talk about Brady. It's 22 people on the field, right? And I think Brady, he took a lot of less money over the years uh, with the Patriots to help get a better team around him. That's something Mahomes, did. he hasn't had nearly the help that Brady has had, so that's a good argument in terms of he's already coming up with a lot less help. It's a team sport at the end of the day. Yeah, well, Tyreek, yeah. yeah. Exactly, I was going to yeah. mention that. Like This season when I, was kind of him to prove himself, like, you know, I don't have as much uh, weapons as before, but with Tyreek leaving, everybody thought he's going to be my number one. Yeah, I got Kelsey, but who else? Yeah. Mm. Kelsey did everything by himself, and there was yeah. no problem, too. So. Still got it done. Exactly. There are some similarities with Brady and Mahomes, though. Early on in their careers, they are really flashy, throwing the ball deep. Brady had uh, Randy Moss. Mahomes had Tyree Kill. Now uh, you see Mahomes transitioning to uh, death by a thousand cuts when he's playing on the field, which is what Brady was known for late in his career, throwing to running backs, slot receivers, tight ends. So really similar in that way. Here's a t uh, little nugget about Mahomes. In this postseason, 72 out of 100, uh, Pass, passing completion, 703 pass yards, seven touchdowns, zero interceptions, Super Bowl MVP. Also, MVPs versus the number one defense in the league that year. Cam Newton lost in the Super Bowl. Peyton Manning lost in the Super Bowl to the Legion of Boom. Yep. And Rich Gannon lost in the Super Bowl as well. Mahomes, come on. <laughs> what more can you say about him? That's yeah. GOAT status right there. Exactly. Well, I know we talked about a lot about the NFL, but I mean, it was a pretty interesting and a wild NBA trend line. A absolutely. lot of trades were going on. Perhaps the craziest. Probably. No, yeah. absolutely the craziest. Yeah. They 
everyone came down to the wire. Yeah. Everyone waited. First things kicked off with Kyrie, which I don't think anyone saw him going to Dallas, but knowing Mark Cuban now, I think it makes sense. He was probably the only one willing to pay, yeah. Yeah. pay that much out of pocket. But, and now KD to the Suns. I know we were talking a little bit about it earlier about who our final two are going to be, but I think the Suns now are going to be great contenders. I think the Lakers definitely up their roster mm. a little bit, but mm. I think the Suns are going to be the ones to look out for, for sure. And then with the Suns, do you think they can be contenders t to like go to the finals or actually win the whole thing? I, uh, you know, for me, it's going to ha it's going to come down to the Mavs and the Suns for me in the West, uh. but you know, pers I'm going to have to take the triple threat over the double threat of Doncic and Kyrie. I'm going to have to take them three because, I don't know, three three is more company and you don't know the personalities yet, how they're going to yeah. blend together, but, but they have more shooters on that team. I mean, they're just hot right now. They're going to be hot in the West, so I think they're going to go to the I finals. Mean, uh, the Suns do look very good, but it's, it looks like another of like maybe a minor – um, nets where like you have a lot of shooters and right. stuff so it might be too scary of like who wants the ball especially knowing KD's personality he right. wants to be the man and then Devin Booker he's young and he also wants to be the man and he's there he's been there for his whole time so I feel like he wants to make sure like hey I know you're all, one of the best players in the league but this is my team so we're just gonna have to figure out and see how the Suns team but it's yeah. gonna be fun to see that be. Arizona Dallas game yes, for sure yeah. oh, yeah. all right Titans that is all the time we have for you today thank you for joining us I am Oscar Rodriguez. Thank you, everybody. I'm Enrique Medina. See you again soon. I'm Alex Granados. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'm Marissa Flores. And I'm Ethan Michael. And hey, give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter if you haven't already at CSUF Titan Sports to keep you updated on all things sports.